trigger on the Browning T-Bolt, my Browning T-Bolt, because out of the box the trigger is, yeah, I'll go and I'll describe the trigger, um, how would I describe the trigger? The trigger, it doesn't feel, and I know people say, oh you shouldn't dry fire rim fires, look, this is, everything, every part in this except for one spring is stainless. It's not cheap crap like you know cheap steel. Um, it can it can handle a few dry fires. Relax. Now, how would I describe the trigger? I would describe the trigger. Well, take it off safety. I would describe the trigger by saying that it's it's a single stage trigger, yes, but it, when you when you're actually squeezing or pulling the trigger, um, it feels like you're squeezing a really hard piece of rubber. That's quite literally what it feels like. It's a really it's a really weird um, kind of feeling. Not like any other trigger that I've had on any other firearm. It's it's totally unique in how in the feel of it. Um, out of the box, it was four and a half pounds. So you know, being a uh, being a bit of a internet shopping junkie, um, I found out that there's a replacement trigger because it's a trigger pack. Right, and it's Jard Incorporated in Sheldon, Indiana. That's Indiana, IA. Yeah. Now, so this is what you get with the Jard. Jard. It's very nice. It's it's quite. It doesn't look like it's cast. It's definitely yeah. It is a. It's machined out of a billet of alloy. It's, it's really, really well made. No doubt about that. It is really, really well made. I have to say that. But, and it's a pretty big but. Uh, the actual trigger pack is, an ex is like a tank where the safety rocker is it's like a it's like an extension of the tang the actual tang of the rifle itself is not a part of that that the trigger pack the, where the safety rocker is is a different assembly now that rocker right um, it was actually clashing with the back of the tang so I took the rocker off which was a bit of a mission and it's just this crappy little um, roll pin that's holding on onto this, under this actuating arm or whatever it is. And it's yeah, never been the same since. I had to actually scallop out the end of that rocker so that it wouldn't clash with the end with the end of the tang. Uh, then every now and so yeah got that out of the way I mean it's a sweet breaking trigger it's 12 ounces it's just it's a the actual trigger itself like that is superb the the pack is just superb but it doesn't function properly as in it's got a serious problem the fact that it just releases the bolt every now and then I'll be cycling it and out will come the bolt now this is what you've got to do to remove the bolt on the stock trigger pack. You have to cock, drive it forward until you feel resistance. Uh, 
put it on, yeah, put it on safe. Sorry, it's loose in the stock. Put it on safe. There's a button. There's a button there, which is actually a sort of rocker. I'll show you. It, it, it's that thing there. It's a, it's a rocker, which is the the bolt release and the the um, the firing pin release <clears throat> that releases the firing pin to fire when it's under tension. So you cock it, you move it forward until you feel, until you can expose the button, have it on safe, press the button, out she comes. Now, with this jarred pack, I would have this in there, you know, and didn't get, you don't, I didn't have to go through any of that malarkey. Every now and then it'd just bzz, come out, which is really dis disconcerting and embarrassing. Like, uh, yeah, out of range on a, on a bench, fine, but if you're out in the field and, yeah. So, I've, I've, yeah, I've, I said, no thank you, Jard. You've obviously got something wrong, seriously wrong. Um, I know some people might say, oh, no, 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 whatever, but, um, what I might do is just check out whether it's this rocker that's the problem. And if I can replace this rocker <clears throat> with the stock one, which I might do, I don't know. Because I've, 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 already, I've already adjusted the trigger, but it was, it was out of the box four and a half pounds, which is just, and the problem is that, yeah, you've got a trigger adjustment, but there's only one way for that screw to go. You unscrew it all the way and it's four and a half pounds. If you screw it all the way in, you just make it heavier. So that's crap, Browning, all right? Four and a half pounds or more for a weight of a trigger for this rimfire, which is supposed to be, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, it's touted as having a semi-match barrel, right? What? So clearly there's, there's a, you know, the, some people want to do the target shooting with it. <clears throat> Why else would you have a semi-match uh, semi chamber? Not barrel, semi-match chamber. Um, and yet, you've got one of the crap... Well, the second worst trigger I've, ever, I've had on any firearm, the Remington 7615, was just... <laughs> a pile of shit. Okay, yeah. I had to... Uh, buy some Timney replacement parts to put in that, which fixed it, but, or fixed it a bit, but, you know, they're just, these, these, these trigger pack triggers, I'm not a fan of at all, like seriously, because you, they're trying to do one, two things, have something that really, it's got a safety, have something that releases the, the bolt, and also, um, and releases the the firing pin to fire, so it's an all-in-one sort of thing, and they didn't get it right, definitely. Now, <clears throat> so I'll show you what I did to fix it, uh, because I I was on I was on uh, YouTube, just I don't even know how I got onto it, but I was watching one guy do his fix, a guy called the Accurizer. He's only done one video. Um, if you want to see how he fixed it, or how he reckons he fixed it, he reckons he lightened it by, I think, a pound or something. Um, which is, to me, that fix is really half-assed. Um, you're cutting plastic and, and filing, you know, a, a brass ferrule, and just, yeah, that's not my... I mean, it, it's a... It's a long and... Um, quite elaborate video it's the first video it's the only video he's ever done so if you do want to watch the accurizer do his trigger fix give him a break you know uh, hey when, when you do something anything for the first time uh, you're not going to do a brilliant job so give him a break all right because there's some people left like really nasty comments and that and just, like one guy I reckon he couldn't understand him like, yeah he's British but God, he's not, I don't know, he's not from Devon or something, Cornwall. Sorry to all the people in Western England, South West England, 
Um, yeah, but you do have really thick accents. Um, so anyway, back to the subject at hand. Yeah, the Jard. Uh, I think it cost me 240 Australian, which, considering what, you know, how much work has actually gone into that, yeah, I think it's worth it, but there's a lot of people that just go, uh, I'm not going to pay that. Well, you know, some of the Timneys aren't, aren't any cheaper. <coughs> Pardon me. So, anyway, I'll, um, I'll get into this. So, we've got the bolt out. This is already loose. So, to get it out of the stock. Now, this is a, another beef that I've got with browning. Um, these action screws that, that oh, I'll take the magazine out. Uh, I, was, I was actually at the gun shop the other day and I was talking about my T-bolt. Well, no, I was, I was having a look at, a, at some 22s and um, like I had to look at the new CZ457. I had a look at, uh, I had a look at the Lithgow, <laughs> now I'm pronouncing it like an American, the Lithgow 101. Um, yeah, sweet, sweet guns. And which other one? Oh yeah, the, I had another look at the Tika T1X, which, yeah, I found it really, yeah, I, still to this day I find it really disappointing. And uh, and he was really talking it up, this, this guy who I'd never seen there before. He was, oh, you know, I've won the state championship with that gun and rah, 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 and, uh, man, your competition must have been shit. Because I, yeah, I find that hard to believe, like really hard to believe. Because you know when you've got guys like Aussie, and I mentioned Aussie, Aussie reviews. And I said, yeah, he he had problems with his, and he, you know, he was not impressed. And he's a Tika guy, and he said, oh no, nah, you know, he tends to carry on. And I was like, well, he's a Tika fan, so. And, he had problems with it. Um, and then, and I didn't m mention um, Jason from AHP, Australian Hunting Podcast. Good good channel, watch him. He's he's a Tika guy through and through. Like, he's a, he only has one firearm that is not a Tika, which is his CZ, I believe. So, he's a total Tika guy. And I remember when he did his review, uh, he said, would I buy it again? And said, no. Now, this is a complete and utter Tika fanboy saying he would not buy the Tika T1X if he had the choice again. So, that tells me something. This guy's telling me he's won a state championship with it. He might have. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know him from Bar of Soap, but let me tell you. Um, yeah. There are certain things about that gun that yeah, I'm just not enamoured with. Alright, so now this is the beef that I have with these screws. They are, oh man, they are tiny. I mean, that's an action screw? You're going to be kidding me. That is tiny. With a, with a two and a half mil he, uh, hex head. Uh, what? What do you... That's that's a toy. That's gonna hold everything together. Yeah. So anyway, off she comes. The stock is is actually it's not too bad. I mean, it's bedded. They've actually bedded it. So yeah, whether a twenty-two really needs bedding or not. I mean, yeah. Now. The, the, in here, there's another two and a half mil screw. The trigger pack just comes off. It's one screw. Oh, there it's tang. And it just comes off like that. And uh, the screw is actually captive, so you can't lose it. Now, now, So I want to see, where's my glasses? I'll just be back in a sec, I've just got to get my glasses so I can see this better, magnifying glass, so I'll just be back in a minute. All right, I'm back, I've got the glasses. Now, what did I want to see? Uh, yeah. 
So, uh, wrong screw. Uh, it's that screw. Okay. So when I tighten the rear action screw up, really, really tight, and I can see. Um, it impinges on the bolt and like I do the action I do my action screws up really tight typically because I yeah, okay. so any double entendres. Um, so I'll just take a little bit off that. Turn a little bit off that to stop it from doing that. So I like my action screws nice and tight. I do not um, like loose action screws, even though, I mean, even though it's only 22, you know, it's not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and I suppose I don't have my diamond files here. Back again. Okay, back again. Yeah, I know. I know I'm gonna get comments about, oh, you need to do better preparation. Uh, you ramble on too much. Well, 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 uh, stiff. <laughs> Stiff, it's my channel. I'll ramble on as much as I want. I'll talk about, you know, I'll go off on a on a tangent and segue and and go off the subject and, and do whatever the bloody hell I want. It's my channel. So shut up. All right. I'm just going to clean the end of that thread so it actually screws in. Now, now, see if that actually goes in. And then, yes. Right, so that was actually impinging on the bolt. Because, the, like, there's. Before that touches the bolt, there's. One. Like this, you've only got two turns. Okay, that's you've only before you threw to the bolt because this the bottom of the the receiver is so thin. So yeah, they didn't really think that out very well. So that bolt screw was actually impinging on because I was doing it up so tight, it was actually impinging on the bolt. So I'd have to back it off. And I don't like having um, loose actions. It wasn't loose, but you know, uh, I'm going to do it up as tight as I can because I like it tight. No double entendres. Uh, all right, so we'll get rid of this. And so I've got the. Um, I put the. By the way, these mounts, um, the Weaver 25s, they are not the right mounts. It's they're a different radius, so. When I was at the gun shop, I was desperate, and they said, "Yeah, yeah, these fit. Yeah, they're a different radius. The radius of these mounts is larger than the than the actual radius of the round receiver, and so there was a gap, and I could actually see, the, I could actually move the scope rocket side to side. So what I've done in the meantime, until I get proper mounts, is um, I was trying to get DNZ, couldn't get it." Um, so what you do is you just chuck Loctite under there and that stuff goes so hard, you know, it's like, yeah, it doesn't rock anymore. All right, so get this out of the way as well. So what we're talking about <coughs> is this thing. Um, I'll get some paper to put it on. This notebook. Right. What we're talking about is this thing. Uh, yeah. So it's got one screw that holds it. Uh, one screw that holds it onto the action. There's a hook. There's a hook there. Hook. And then screws down and yeah, it's solid in place. Uh, the actual pack to take it apart, there are three. If you want to see a real extensive disassembly of it, just watch the Accurizer. Um, 
Now, he said, oh, you need three hands to take this, because there's a, on the left-hand side, there's a cover plate, all right? That cover plate has got, uh, like, hook catches, plastic hook catches that hook um, onto this side and this side. So what you've got to do is release them. Now, the accurizer reckoned, oh, you need three hands. You've got to have them all released at the same time, otherwise the cover won't come off. Um, and he used toothpicks uh, to shove in there to have them all released at the same time. He still had to muck around a bit. Um, I tried that, and I've, I've already taken this apart a few times now, trying to figure out how to fix it. And um, so it's really not, it's actually not that hard. Um, all you got to do is undo one and just pull on that cover plate. Undo one. That one, that forward one has to go down. The, this bottom one's got to go up. Oh, it's already starting to come off. And this, this rearward one has got to go down and bang. There's the cover off. So it's not that hard. Um, yeah, he made it out to seem like it was a nightmare, but no, nah, just comes straight off. But thankful, I thank him for showing me ha how to disassemble it. Um, now, here's one shocking thing, shocking to me anyway. <laughs> Quite sure. Oh, by the way, once you take that cover off, that screw that holds it onto the act, onto the action um, just falls out. So don't forget to put that in because it is captive and if you put it together you won't get that screw in. This trigger, beautiful gold trigger, it's plastic. The whole thing is plastic, just one piece of plastic. A $1,200, $1,300 rifle and you get a, a, a plastic trigger. Uh, so, now, so now, the actual spring is here, alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some close-up work, so back in a minute. Alrighty, so there is a lovely beautiful plastic, gold plastic trigger. Yeah. <laughs> That's a disgrace. Browning, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Now, I was just comparing that torch, that torch you there, there it is. I was just comparing whether that rocker, the dual purpose rocker, could possibly look exactly the same as this one and it is not it's totally different so I can't adapt that rock this rocker to that uh, completely different now so one of the things is that once you do take this uh, the cover off this trigger pack I don't know if you can see there where it says void 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 there's a piece of tape when you remove it the silver void writing stays there which means you've avoided your warranty that doesn't matter my warranty ran out a while ago so don't care um, now as you can see it's there's stuff everywhere um, but the actual item how how I reduce the weight of this um, trigger by one and a half pounds so now it's three pounds it was four and a half. I don't have any footage of. Um, I, I don't have any footage of me me testing it with the old Lyman trigger pull trigger pull gauge um, because I did it last night. I did this last night in a fit of of frustration and disappointment and you know, all mixed together. I went. I'm going to fix this bloody trigger um, now. So, what the Accurizer did was that uh, this shelf, right, 
normally this this shelf would go straight over there like that okay and you would have you would be able to turn that adjustment screw you turn that adjustment screw and screw it down to that height but no uh, in they call that the lawyer shelf apparently because the lawyers got involved and said what you can adjust it down to two and a half pounds no you know we want it minimum four and a half pounds which is a joke so this shelf has been added uh, the brass ferrule 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 whatever that the uh, trigger weight adjustment screw uh, goes into um, has to be also ground down after you cut this shelf out that's that's how the accurizer um, reduce his weight but you're only moving that that spring from there to there and or that arm from there to there that's you know I was looking at that and to me uh, I had a look on a couple of forums there was one forum that where one guy was really frustrated with his trigger he ended up getting a jarred and hearing it's the best thing ever um, yeah 12 ounces is the best thing ever but yeah I had so many problems with that jar that yeah I just discarded it <clears throat> and yeah lost two hundred forty dollars if anyone wants to buy it let me know you can have it um, now so what he did he's chopped this square piece of lawyer shelf out and, and filed he really needs to get himself a Dremel and filed the brass ferrule and that can just see that brass ferrule probably not um, or there you can see the brass ferrule um, which uh, on, on the yeah, that guy who replaces with the jarred and tried this fix it did nothing it did not reduce the weight because you're only moving that spring from there to there now the accurizer reckoned he reduced his trigger pull by one pound by doing that I don't know I'll show you what I did and it's pretty easy to do this what you do is you pull the spring out and it's just yep there she goes now so what I have done I'll show you so what I if you can see that that angle right what I have done is that I have grabbed a hold of that with a pair of pliers that end um, put a similar diameter uh, rod in there which was just a Phillips head screwdriver that's a very similar diameter to that hole in there and just bent this spring around more now <clears throat> I, I saw one YouTube video where the guy was saying no 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 or it was a comment no 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 you shouldn't bend a spring once you bend a spring you damage it and it'll break and fall apart and the world will come to an end crashing down your head and just utter nonsense I mean clearly this the person who made that comment doesn't know anything about springs or the metallurgy of springs I'm not a metallurgist but I knew, do know something about springs I mean what he was saying if, if what he was saying was true and you actually because you're bending it in the same direction that it was originally curled around in now yes it this was bent to shape uh, prior to tempering prior to hardening and tempering but springs are really tough you know if if every time a spring you know, this, they're designed to flex and bend and move that's why they're called springs too because they spring right now if if what I did was such a bad thing uh, then everyone's like car springs would be would be breaking like maybe not the coil springs but leaf springs because they're constantly you know straightening out and, and where, you know when you're going over bumps with leaf springs you, you've got this motion all the time you well if, if what this person said was true they would work hard in no time and break but, but I've as far as passenger vehicles are concerned I have never ever seen a broken leaf spring or even heard of it commercial vehicles yes because a lot of times commercial vehicles get overloaded and people do stupid things but just bending that spring more is not going to do a whole lot of damage and I know no doubt some people are going to say no you're talking rubbish it will do damage look I mean, it's not like I wound around and tried to wind around another another uh, 
coil. All right, just bend it a little bit more. So that's fine. Relax. It's not going to destroy. I haven't destroyed it. So to get it back in, once you've done that, and I like, so that was essentially that angle. Uh, that and where I going to say you can see that angle was. Put it on here. Uh, not very good. Uh, that angle, those two arms were pretty much parallel on the same plane, and I've just bent it by that much. Right. So just by doing that and not destroying the spring, sorry, I'm going to put my glasses on. Uh, we'll put this back on. So what I do is pop it on the pin, put it on the lawyer shelf. Inside the lawyer shelf there. Oh, yeah, I can't get it in there. Come on, get in there. Yeah, like that. Like that. And then just push the other arm around. So I can't, it's very hard to do that and show you at the same time. So hold it down and just push that thing around. And if it wants to go in there, you're not going to damage. Uh, I can't do it. I'll have to do it looking at it. You're not going to damage the sear just by, no, it's on top. Oops. You might damage this, this tr crappy plastic trigger, but you're not gonna. Fuck. You're not gonna. Sorry, you're not gonna damage there. So that is in place. So you sit that on the lawyer shelf, that arm, and then you need to push that arm back into the hole. So that's the sear there. Uh, it's hardened steel. You're not gonna damage that. And this trigger is. Just this gold coated plastic. <laughs> yeah, what a piece of junk. Uh, so, once you've done that, just. Because this is a bit of an experiment, because someone had actually said that, that this is what they did, and there was all these comments about, oh, oh, almost forgot the screw. Don't put it in yet. Yeah, so that's the screw that holds it onto the action that goes in there. Pop that back on, line everything up, if you can, maybe not, uh, like that, and it actually goes together. So there you go. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, now. See, that's, that's all that. Yeah, this is really not that much. Oh, sorry. This is... That's all that trig is doing. Just releasing this rocker. Uh, so that's the, tr the trigger spring release. And this is the bolt release at this end. Now, we'll put it back in the rifle and... Uh, We'll do a uh, we'll do a, uh, a weight test because, like I said, out of the box it was four and a half pounds. So that's that's the end of the how-to. All right, we'll get back to uh, panning out a bigger picture. Alrighty, so we're, we've got the bigger picture. Uh, the sun has come out. It was really overcast before. That's why it was dark. I've actually got a light on, which I don't need now. Just drinking coffee. Relax. I suppose people are going to say, oh, you probably got brandy or bourbon or something. No, I don't. Okay, so let's get this back together. So, first things first. First things first. So, you've got that hook. Light background. I'll put that down. So, maybe I can see that. You've got a hook there that hooks under yeah, like that. Uh, 
where the magwell is and then you get your hex key and do the retaining screw up screw that They've, they've, they've really used El Cheapo screws because the heads. So I like that nice and tight. That's on there solid, so we can put the bolt in. Uh, we don't need. Uh, make sure that's totally. The bolt's totally open. Make sure that's it's got to be on safe. Put it back in, so the bolt's back in. So, what I've done is I've also um, on this round portion, right? Uh, I was getting a big burr, I you probably can't see, but there was a big burr right there and right there that was developing. When this pops back in, and when you yank it out. Um, it, that's not round. It should it should be rounded because uh, so I've rounded it a bit, taken that burr off and rounded it a bit, and taken off a few other sharp edges. Uh, we shouldn't exist on a twelve hundred dollar rifle anyway, but yeah, I'm not going to carry on about it. So anyway, put it on fire. Let's have a test of the trigger now. Like I said, it was four and a half pounds. Come on. It was four and a half pounds, which, uh, yeah, that's bogus. So, ready to go. Ready? Okay. Three. Three point three pounds, point six of an ounce. We'll try it again. I don't know if people are going to say, you should dry fire your rim fire. Yeah, whatever. You know what, I've dry fired a shitload of rim fires and I've never had any problems. So, two pounds 12. Right. So, we'll go again. Zero it. I'll do it so you can see what it's reading. Ready to go? Ready? Two pounds eleven. So two pounds twelve point nine. Two pounds thirteen. So less than three pounds. Two pounds twelve. So I'm really happy with that. Two pounds twelve ounces. Yes, that's what the doctor ordered. Now, again, my big bitch is these action screws are like just a joke. I mean, they're tiny. They're really tiny. And this rear one, that rear one. That goes in a, well, you can't see it, the holes through there. It, because uh, this, the side of this receiver is so thin, you, I mean, you're only going in, what, what, three mil, three millimeters? That's nonsense. And I'm trying to do it up tight and it's impinging on the bolt. So, so I'll just remove the bolt. Again, I'll give you another demo about how to remove the bolt in these things. Uh, so, what you've got there is you've got the bolt release there. That's one end of the rocker. So you cock, send it back forward. As soon as you open that bolt, that's cocked. All right, that's why it's a little bit hard. Send it forward till you can see that rocker. Depress it. Did you see that? It, it released. Oh, it's got to be unsafe. So I screwed, sorry, I screwed up. So. Cock, release, push that down, push that down, push that down, and out she comes. Yeah, screwed that up, didn't I? Uh, <clears throat> so, 
I'll get this back into the action. So, probably see me doing that. So, you can see that it's, they've actually, they have actually bedded it. You see the bedding compound, whoops, you can see the bedding compound. Um, the actual, the, in, the innards of the stock, it's, it's not a total piece of garbage, but, yeah, could have done better. Wouldn't mind that curly maple. It, all, it comes in a curly maple stock as well, which, yeah, I would have preferred. But this is a, for hunting, right, yeah, this is, because you've got the spare, uh, you've got the spare magazine in the butt, which, yeah, is always handy. Any, at least it comes with two magazines, you know, that's always a bonus. So, we'll get this back in there. That's front action screw. I'll drop the rear, oh yeah, there it is, that's the one I was thinking about. The rear action screw. So, we'll just... I'll tighten it with... This, um, so I'll see how it go if I took enough meat off the head off the end of that screw that I can actually tighten this properly. Let's see. People say, oh, you should be using your uh, you should be using your because I've got a a torque yeah a torque wrench. Um, I do have a, a wheeler wrench that goes in inch pounds, but these the heads of these screws are so small that I don't have um, a tip that's small enough and accurately cut. Otherwise, because I tried one and uh, almost rounded the, the screw head, which is not a good thing. So I've done that. Oh, let's see, can I do it any tighter? This is what I was doing yesterday and it was impinging on the bolt. So I'm trying to find that head. Screwing around. No. Yes. Alright, so that's really tight. Let's see if it affects the bolt now. Oh, put it down safe. Yeah, it is. See that? I'm gonna probably have to take loosen this off a bit. See when I loosen it off, if I can find the bolt head, sorry. I'll loosen that off. Alright, an eighth of a turn. See the difference? So I'll have to take more off that screw. I'll do that later. But now it's 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 really whoops it's really smooth one of the reasons it's really smooth one of the reasons it's really smooth I'll put that down is because uh, I'll I'll uh, get my ugly head back in the picture and talk to you right oh it's gone overcast again so yeah dark again one of the reasons I'll just say I'll just I'll show you something this TF2 it's a Teflon based lubricant and I got shown I've already spoken about it before I got shown it by um, a work a work colleague who was a triathlete and all all the um, all the bike riders used it on their uh, bikes and it is, it's made by Weltite uh, in, in England, okay. Made in the UK, Weltite Products Limited, Harrier Road, Barton on Humber, okay. In the UK. Okay, we're, we're North Lincolnshire, I think. Yeah. All right. So this stuff is excellent. Like, 
it is probably, as far as oil lubricants, I'm not talking grease or graphite, I'm talking as far as oil, thin oil lubricants are concerned, it's the best. Like, really, it is the best. Um, once you apply a few coats, it does develop a film, and um, it makes it so slick. That is just so, so smooth. dry fire it again so people can have a wit have, have a lose their yeah lose their marbles about this guy dry firing a rim fire oh no you'll destroy it yeah all right um so that's the trigger fix uh so it's gone from four and a half pounds to i wish i had shown that you know so that people could see that you yeah. know it was four and a half pounds, but I was I did it really late last night, and <clears throat> I really wasn't interested in setting up the camera and doing all that malarkey. Um, so it's gone from four and a half pounds to two pounds twelve ounces. Uh, that's pretty good. All right. So the the magazines again. The guy at the gun shop that I spoke to the other day, he reckoned that people were having trouble with them. I've never had any problems with them. They're really easy to load. They work great. I think he's talking nonsense. Or, I don't know, like I said, I, I've not heard anyone have any problems with them that they break or, I mean, it's a piece of plastic, yeah, but, hey. Uh, now, so on Friday, today's Monday, on Friday, I'm going to take this thing to the range and um, see how I go. Do a little bit more accuracy testing because I've got the beloved Walters El Cheapo Chinese scope, which is a fantastic scope. Uh, and what I've actually done is three of the ammos that I've got, that I've got quite a lot of, I've actually batch weighed them so that I've got them separated in by weight. Whether that slight difference in weight is from the lubric amount of lubricant that's on the, or whether it's the amount of primer material or whether it's powder or the projector, I don't know. But I've separated them by weight. I know. I know that like match guys, they do weigh their their projectiles. Um, I have to say that the number one my ammo of choice these days in the 22 long rifle is RWS target rifle. It's cheap. It's of a very very high standard. I've found it's extremely consistent. Of the three different am I, I um because I've got some SK magazine that I weighed. There was there was like a bit of variance in that. Uh, there was also Highland or PPU, it's PPU, 22 stuff, um, old stuff. Uh, there was a fair bit of variation in that, but the RWS target rifle, there was not a whole lot of variation. It was very, very consistent, like really consistent, so. Um, that's probably why it's uh, such good stuff and out of my CZ and out of CZ, CZ and out of this thing the Browning T-Bolt it's yeah it's really really good now so I'll take this I'll test this out again accuracy wise because like when I tested this the first time when I did the review the conditions were horrendous and they'll probably be horrendous again every time I go they're horrendous but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 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 photo the Voer my two, my beautiful Austrian 270 which is a work of art um, I have spoken the truth about that and I am very disappointed with the accuracy of that thing it is a low tar Walther barrel which they're supposed to make really accurate barrels but that thing shoots yeah it's, a, it's not a hose but as far as I'm concerned, it is a bit of a hose. So, because I was so impressed, this Cellier and Bellow uh, 130 grain soft point, it's big round nose soft point, but because it just goes so well through that, uh, through through my um, Steyr, uh, I thought, you know what? I'll give this a go through the photo, see how 
see if I can get the same, you know, or better accuracy because I don't think, I'm pretty sure I haven't shot this out of the photo. So I'll see how it goes. I've also got some, what are these? Yeah, yeah. the 120 grain SSTs. I've, I've still got some of them left. How many have I got left? Um, yeah, not many. Um, the, I think the best was the 130 grain SSTs. I don't think I've got any of those projectiles left, so, uh, but I'll just shoot this stuff off. I might just shoot these off as, I don't know, ciders or something. And, uh, and then use the cellular and below to dry out, see what the accuracy is like. But anyway, uh, I know this has been long winded and people are going to find a lot of it boring and pointless and me just nah, 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 jabbering on, but that's how it is. Take it or leave it. I really don't care if, if you don't like it. Bad luck. Oh. Some will probably have a bitch about that, me having a drink while I'm filming. Oh, God. What an amateur. Yeah, I am an amateur. No one's paying me to do this. Idiots. So, um, yeah, that's how I reduced my trigger pull weight. Just bend the spring. Just bend it in the same direction that, it, that it, the coils are going. And that's what you've got to do. And I didn't bend it a lot, you know. It is spring steel, you know. It is high tensile. It's... It's not ductile, well it is, but it's not very ductile at all, minimal, so there's no problems there. So if you want to reduce the weight of your trigger without cutting and grinding and filing and... Some people even drill, uh, reckon drilling a hole in the tang. Um, I wouldn't have... You know what, that's really, really hard, case hardened steel. Yeah, for the size of hole that you need to drill in it, probably not going to happen. Maybe if you shot a laser through it, it would work. If, if you've got access to a laser, that'll work. It'll just peck, 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 boop, through and punch a one mil hole. But, yeah, I wouldn't advise trying to drill. I wouldn't advise any of the other methods. What I did, that's my advice, do that. Okay, so take that for what it's worth. So anyway... No doubt, you're going to tell me this is long and I talk too much and I ramble on and yeah, but yeah, this is a hobby, it's not a profession, uh, no one's paying me to do it, if you don't like it, move along, so hope you enjoyed it, see you later. Oh, I'll, um, I'll take this out, like I said, I'll take it out on Friday and do another accuracy port, report, I'll shoot off, I'll, well no I won't, no I'll keep a little bit of the other, I've got a, still a fair bit, quite a few different brands that I'll keep just for testing when I buy another 22 which no doubt I will sooner or later um, because I do move a few guns if I'm not completely in love with them um, I've moved my semi rem mag on uh, which was the Remington long range uh, which is a bargain because I sold it on con I sell it on consignment at gun shop I don't, I don't like all the private nonsense um, and I also sold my uh, Varmint 243 Howard, which I regret. I actually went back there to, to get it back off him, but I only had it for like two weeks or something, less. And he said, no, nah, that's sold. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'm going to buy another one, another Howard, heavy barrel, heavy barrel Howard 243, yeah. Um, and also once I get the uh, the the RCBS Summit Press, I'll be able to make decent ammo now that I've got micrometer um, die equipment. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, I'll get back to you after the range report. See you later.